Hi guys, welcome to the workshop. Those of you that know me will be aware that I'm in favour of the French cleat system. I actually like the system and I think it works quite well. I use it in my small workshop mainly because one, it's only a small workshop and I like to have everything to hand. And two, I'm quite lazy. And by lazy, I mean I can never be bothered to root through cases trying to find certain tools and then having to put them away when I've finished using them. So I've made quite a few holders in the past for different tools. So here's where I keep my orbital sander, the dust port uh, adapter, dust box, and four different grades of sanding discs. And that's got the cable tidy on the side. Moving down, I've got my trim router storage and the router just sits through between these two shelves I've got all my bases, router bits, um, spanner etc and that's also got a cable tidy moving down is my 5 inch parkside disc sander um, and this is where I actually use the disc sander so it's it's almost like it's got its own little workbench um, also with the cable tidy storage underneath for sanding discs and the dust port drops down here so you can attach the vacuum moving across this is where I keep my Makita charger battery um, it's got room up here for batteries but I haven't actually got spare batteries at the moment and I've only got one drill hence why there's no slots cut in this part there's room for expansion there moving across simple holder for my pneumatic nail gun 18 gauge little drawer at the bottom for the nails here I've got a small parts storage system which is just basically cheap takeaway containers here I've got a simple clamp rack and I do need a lot more clamps because that's all I've got believe it or not up here I've got my circular saw holder it's got a slot in the top part that the blade and the guard sit through um, blade storage and a little tab in the top right corner Stops it from coming off. Over here, got my glue gun holder and glue sticks. And last but not least is my scrap wood PPE cabinet. Um, I even made the hinges on this one out of some scrap wood. And that's basically where I keep my disposable gloves, wet wipes, dust mask, goggles and ear protection. If anyone wants to see how I made any of these holders, then they've all got their own build video. So feel free to take a look and you can see for yourself. So in this video, I'm going to be making a simple French cleat tool holder for my cordless jigsaw that I got recently. I've not got any plans on paper or anything like that. I normally have a rough idea in my head and I run with it basically to see what we end up with. So hopefully I'll end up with a holder to put the jigsaw. Um, it could go badly wrong or it could go right, who knows? So stick around and see what happens. So for this job, I'm going to be using some offcuts of hardwood ply, both 18 millimeters and 12 millimeters. And I'm starting off by just cleaning up the edges before I work out how big I want the pieces to be. So with all the edges cleaned up, I can then start cutting the first few pieces down to the widths I want. So 
then I can just position the jigsaw where I want it and mark out exactly how big I need the back pieces to be and how long. Then I can start chopping the first few pieces to the correct length and to make sure they're all the same I simply cut the first piece and then line that up on top of the next few pieces and cut them all down that way I know they're all the same length so now I'm actually using the batteries I've got to work out how wide the separate compartments for the batteries needs to be then I can start cutting them down to size on the table saw So I decided I wanted to cut a groove where the lower part was going to be for the jigsaw to actually rest on. So to do that I just made multiple passes on a table saw adjusting the fence very slightly every time. I was planning on using a 12mm thick piece but I made the slot too big so I enlarged it slightly and went for an 18mm thick piece. So with the groove cut I can now decide which is the best side to face forward, mark it up so I can then go over to the miter saw and cut that down to the correct width. So now I need to cut the outer parts where the shelves are going to go and the lower part all to the same thickness right so here's my first minor mistake I wanted this, this and this to all be the same height um, so I put this piece in my table saw because this was the smallest of the three and adjusted the fence till it was up against the blade so that when I cut these they'd all be identical heights or widths uh, I didn't take into account that one this is going to be attached on the edge of this half inch piece of plywood and obviously this sits in the rebate so I haven't quite cut enough off because these two pieces still sit higher up than this so all I'm going to do is just hold that piece against that and put a mark make sure it's sitting square And then I can do the same with this piece and just put a mark and then re cut them. So now you can see that the three pieces are the exact same size. Now for the shelves, I've decided I want to cut some grooves and slide the shelves in. So in order to cut the grooves in the side pieces, I'm going to set the depth stop on my miter saw and just make multiple passes, moving the stock very slightly every time until the grooves are the width I need them to be. And also, I want the shelves to be sloped towards the back to prevent the batteries from being knocked out. So I set the miter saw seven degrees to the right and then I can start cutting the grooves out. So you can see I forgot to put a sacrificial board behind the piece I'm trying to trench cut. So I wasn't able to cut all the way through. So once that was in place, I could start notching out the slots for the shelves to go by just simply making a pass, moving it slightly and gradually working up to the thickness I need.
October the 1st to done, I can then move the mitre saw 7 degrees the opposite direction and do exactly the same thing for the slots on the other side. Now I just need to round over the edges just to soften them up a bit. So now I need to mark out and cut a slot for the dust port to go through on the lower support and I simply hold the jigsaw in place to mark the rough locations and then use a hole saw for the curve and then I can just cut that out with a jigsaw. And here you can see what the slot's for. So now I can start marking out, um, drilling pilot holes, counter sinking, and attaching it all together. These things always seem to take me longer because I've only got the one drill, so I'm constantly swapping over bits. So after fitting the first couple of thin strips, I then had to remove them so I could add some glue. The glue isn't necessary because I'm screwing things in place anyway, but it can't hurt. So when I was pre-drilling this piece, I snapped a drill bit and then had to mess around trying to get the piece out. So 
So the last thing to do is cut the shelves and tap those into position. I'm not using any glue on these because they're quite tight anyway. And there's the holder complete. And now you can see why I cut the slot out of the bottom support for the dust port to go through. And as you can see, there's plenty of room to put the batteries and you can get them out easy enough. Also, if you wanna leave the batteries on, as you can see, it still fits in there. So without the battery in, it simply rests on the bottom part, on the flat section. If you leave the 12 volt battery in, it just simply rests on the battery. And exactly the same if you want to leave the bigger 4 amp hour battery in. So when I first designed this, um, I did it without the guard on, so I was able to use two pieces of half inch ply and I could leave it square on the edge and it went in. It weren't until I'd actually put this front piece on, the guard, and then went to slide it in. It was actually catching on the corners, both sides. So I had to chamfer the edges um, just to give it room when the guard's on. But other than that, I mean, it, it went to plan. So, so it definitely ain't going to win any awards for the best looking tool holder. But it enabled me to use some of my little scraps up. And the good thing about this design is once the jigsaw's in place, there ain't no way it's coming out of there. Not even if you move it to the side either way, you can't take it out at an angle. So once it's on the wall, it ain't gonna get knocked out of there. So it uh, do the job. The only part of the design that didn't go to plan was I was going to cut a, a groove down the middle and that would enable you to leave the blade in the tool and slide it on. But I soon realised I couldn't really do that because no matter where you put the cleat on the back of it, you've got the cleats themselves. And unless you're going to leave it in exactly the same place and cut a notch out the cleat, which I'm not going to do, it means I wasn't able to do that. Um, and the only other thing with this design is the fact you can't put it underneath anything else because obviously you need to slide the tool I like out. the fact that there's no way it can fall out or be knocked out. So, all in all, it was a success right guys hope you enjoyed that one not sure when my next video is going to be uploaded whether that be before christmas or after christmas so i'm going to take this opportunity to wish you all a merry christmas and a happy new year um as always i want to thank my regular subscribers welcome any new subscribers and if you're watching this and you're not yet subscribed then hit that subscribe button, tap the little bell icon, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So until the next video, stay safe, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, see you later.